kind of threw it up and it came off the backboard. And I was like, bro, I could dunk this. <laughs> so I just did it and it worked out and it was kind of a crazy sequence. How are you today? I'm good, man. How are you? Good. Yeah, nice to meet you. My name is Matthew Ryan. I'm a freshman at Villanova and I'm a writer for VU Sports. Work? Yeah. I didn't even know you was a Villanova alum. Love yeah. Love to see it. Yeah. Love to see it. Are you in? I'm in Tolentine right now. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Like windows up top. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. How are you, man? How's the bubble going? Oh, uh, man. It's been a grind, but at the same time, um, an amazing experience. And, it, and a unique experience, um, to to say the least. Um, but I'm definitely enjoying it. Yeah, I know. I mean, it must be pretty difficult. I mean, you just had a daughter, right? Like a few months yeah. ago. Like, so what's that like? Yeah. Been being away from her. Um, it's just like a an adjustment period. Like being new to parenting, new to being a dad. Um, just trying to figure out, find a balance, and um. I get too down that you can't be there um, because, you know, you keep beating yourself up about the profession you chose. Um, something's going to have to give. You're going to either have to stop your profession or you're going to have to be depressed all the time. So I just can I have to find a balance of like um, just figuring it out and yeah. figuring out the best way to be, um, best way to be a dad. Yeah, definitely. Just have to, um, you know, like, just deal with it, I guess. Um, so what stood out about Villanova while they were recruiting you that eventually led to you committing there? Um, I would probably say just, like, from a basketball standpoint, the family atmosphere that they had in the yeah. locker room and as, a, like, organization. Um, like, very organized, very well ran, top to bottom. Coach Wright, Alicia Davidson. Um just do a really good job, like, making sure everything runs well. John Shackleton, one of the best in the business. Like, it, it's just um, – it's hard. To me, it was hard to say no to that school. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, the saying, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. Like, it's so true. Any Anybody can come back here any day, get help from alumni. It's just such a great family atmosphere. Thanks. Yeah. And then your first – the, your first year on campus, you obviously weren't mm -hmm. able to play. There was like a whole thing, which still doesn't make sense to me, but um, very confusing. But uh, how difficult was that for you, you know, being like a five-star freshman? And, I mean, you were going to contribute right away. There wasn't a lot of depth at the big man position. So how difficult was that for you coming in and not really being able to play your freshman year? Um, I would say it was difficult at first, but the more that I got – um, into the year and the more that I got to experience things, learn, um, find myself as a person away from the game of basketball, I think it was an amazing opportunity um, and just the blessing within the curse. Um, so um, yeah. I got into poetry during that time, um, got in a really good shape. I got, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the people around me. And, and I, I honestly, I don't take that time for granted, man. I appreciate and I really value my red shirt year because it helped me become the person that I am. Yeah, definitely. And then that year, you were still able to practice and, you know, like work out with the team and stuff. So what was your role kind of as a practice player? I mean, I know I talked to Dante DiVincenzo and he was talking about how um, going into the Final Four, like uh, he emulated Buddy Heald. And I'm, I assume like you played similar roles to that, you know, emulating players. So what was your role as a practice player that year? I'm Freshman year in practice, it was just, especially if we played a, a good opposing big the next night, it was just, you know, be aggressive, show us what you got in practice, give us good looks. And um, obviously you learn, like, within your own game, but you just be aggressive and uh, try to get guys good reps at defending what they're going to see against whoever we play next. So if I'm in the – and it gets you better because it's like a guy that you're playing against might do something that you really don't do well. Like, I – was always a, a better popper than I was a roller. So if we played a guy, a team, like say we played Georgetown with Jesse Govin and they, I had to act like him, mm -hmm. I'm rolling. So it's like you get more reps of the things that you might not necessarily be good at. So it's just, it's a lot different. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
And then during your first year on campus, you know, you like really got into shape going to that, um, that national championship year. Who helped you get into really good shape? Definitely John Shackleton, man. Um, just helping me tremendously. Uh, Chris Jenkins, um, just being guiding light, um, just letting me know that it could be done. And just all the guys around me, like, you know what I'm saying? Like Eric Pascal, Mikhail, um, just looking out. And like, I think everybody on that team did their own part in helping me make my experience um, a good one, to be honest, because it could have went differently. And uh, the guys around me made it really easy to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how did not being able to play that first year on campus like really motivate you for that next season? Oh, next year it was like I was ready to go. And I think because I had been out of like that live, not practice feel kind of play, it took me a little bit to get going. Um, I think the learning curve that I probably would have had my freshman year, I ended up having a little bit at the beginning of my sophomore year. But once we um, got it going, like the team was rolling. So I – I naturally just follow. Yeah, yeah. And then going to that year, were you always planning on um, going to the draft after that season? Actually, the crazy thing was at the beginning of the year, I, I wasn't even on any draft boards. So I just was like, hey, man, I'm trying to win. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to be here with my guys, probably come back next year, try to make this year as best I can, come back next year, see what they're talking about after next year, and maybe leave as a redshirt sophomore. Um, but after how well I played in the tournament, national championship, um, and then when I when I went to uh, draft workouts, the way that I was performing and the feedback I was getting, I was confident or I felt like I was probably going to be a first-round pick and um, took a chance on myself and, and ended up being a first-round pick. So yeah, um, it all worked out in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then was there a specific moment during that championship season where you were like, geez, like this team is unreal and like we can definitely win a national championship? Oh, several times. But the, the the times that I most felt like we were crazy was probably in practice because um, we were all going at each other. And I feel like we definitely had six, six certified. Obviously, Colin – out we had six certified like pros people who are in the nba right now or in the g league so when they would whenever we would split teams up and everybody would go at it it was it was bedlam <laughs> like, yeah, i i, you know I can't saying? even i can't even imagine what those practices were like they were like in the in my freshman year it was worse because it was josh was there yeah chris uh, josh chris daryl on top of the six that was already yeah. there it was it was it was crazy. That was, was that crazy. that team. Like I mean, from 2016. I mean, 2016 was great, and then 2017 was even better, and then 2018 was just like ridiculous. Yeah. Um. If I if if I would have played on that team, like Josh is your Josh, Chris. Come on, bro. Three, three straight, three straight. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite on the court memory at Nova? Man. There's a lot. Um, I mean, besides the national championship, obviously. I was going to say, besides the Natty, I will probably say my best on-court memory probably would be, if, I, if I'm being selfish, I will probably say putting up my career high against Temple, who, was my, who my brother had just committed to. Mm -hmm. So it was um, yeah. it was kind of funny because he was there and I told him, I was like, if I can, I'm going crazy. <laughs> he was like, we'll see. And then obviously Jalen ended up going for like 31, going crazy. So my, it made my 27 look real secondary. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I still have fun and I still got the bragging rights with my little brother. So um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And then talk about that sequence, and I think it was against West Virginia, where you, like, blocked a shot with your forearm and then went down <laughs> and put back a dunk. Like, I remember watching that game, and, I mean, you guys weren't playing like I like I knew that you guys could, and then there was, like, a two-minute stretch where you guys just went ridiculous yeah. and ended up winning by 
at least 10 or something like that. But yeah, talk about that, that little sequence you had right there. I mean, it's crazy because it's like Coach Wright always talks about it, defending and rebounding, and the basketball guys would just put you in the right place. It was my job to be over low men. Like, we always taught go hands back. So Mikhail did what he was supposed to do. He went hands back. As he went hands back, the guy threw up a shot he shouldn't have. So I just <laughs> – so I blocked it, caught it, and I outletted it to Phil. And my natural reaction was just follow the play. So I just followed the play, and then Phil got caught in the air. Like, it was like a weird mm-hmm. – he kind of threw it up, and it came off the backboard. And I was like, bro, I could dunk this. <laughs> so I just did it, and it worked out, and it was kind of a crazy sequence. Yeah, that was that crazy was crazy. Sequence. And then – um. What was, what was your favorite off-the-court memory at Villanova during your two years here? Oh, man. Off the court probably would be, like, just being with my friends who weren't even who weren't even basketball players and just playing Uno. Um, like, the real college feel of college, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. stuff that had nothing to do with basketball, and it just had everything to do with being a regular kid. You know what I mean? Just playing cards, going for walks, listening to music, like, all that type of stuff. Yeah. So when you first got into the league, was there somebody that kind of took you under their wing, like when you were with the Hawks or even with the Warriors? I would say uh, when I was with the Hawks, Torian Prince um, looked out a lot. Uh, shout out to TP for real. Um, and I would say once I was with the Warriors, it was more so probably Dre. But, like, even then, me and Dre, like, weren't really, like, super close. I don't want to give, like, anybody the impression, like, Dre, like. But Dre always, just being a leader, just mm-hmm. drops drops knowledge, little snippets. Um, so it was cool, man. It wasn't, like, I want to say I had, like, a guy that was, like, solely there for me. Mm-hmm. But definitely a lot of people helped me. And, like, just listening um, picked up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, like with Draymond, I mean, obviously with James Wiseman this year, like listening to a podcast and like, yeah, like he's he's at Draymond Green University right now. Like you see him on the floor just coaching it up. So, yeah. And then when you got into the league, was there somebody that you played with or against that you were kind of starstruck by when you shared the court? You're like, geez, like, I can't believe I'm sharing a court with this guy. So, so my rookie year, like whenever we played Giannis Antetokounmpo, and LeBron James, those guys were my matchup. Yeah. So, like, I come in – I'll never forget this. I come in, we're playing the Lakers, and I, I wasn't starting at this point. I come into the room, like, to the film room, and you know how they have, like uh, – when you start film, they'll have, like, starting lineups, mm-hmm. and then they'll have the matchup right under it, right? So – we come in, and I for, I honestly forget who's on the team that year. But I see it, and I see the matchups, and I see L. James, O. Spellman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I, I like I remember being like so shook to be honest. Um, and then the same thing with Giannis, and then I just had to take the challenge and do the best I could because I know once I get out there, I'm competing. Yeah, but like when it's like that first. Uh, you're not big fish anymore. Like, you know, in high school, you could tell me I'm matching up with anybody. My confidence is sky high. Like, come on, bro. In college, I'm on the best team in the country. So it's like, even if I have a bad one, y'all still not winning. Like, (laughs) and then you get to the NBA where it's like real, not even big fish. It's big sharks out here. Yeah. I I, got to be honest. When I saw my rookie year, L. James O. Spellman, I was like, "That's this is crazy. Like, this is yeah. really my dream is, like, really happening. But definitely yeah. starstruck. Yeah, that's 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 a great, great story. And then getting traded from the Hawks, what was it like kind of having to switch organizations? It must have been pretty hectic. But what was that experience like? Yeah. For me, it was just having to regroup. Um, when you get traded for the first time, it's kind of like a gut check because you don't know how to um, – you don't know how to take it. Um, because you grow up in college, I mean, in high school, you're in control of where you go. 
like if you transfer or if you don't transfer or whatever in college you pick your school and until they tell you they don't want you there or you want to transfer that's who you're with when you get to the nba it's not like that um no one has to uh let you play through your mistakes no one has to um let you grow no one has like people could literally it's my organization i can make the decision like hey I don't like this. Yeah. And that's the end of it. You know what I mean? So um, for me, it was just learning, regrouping, and then trying to come out and come back better than I was in Atlanta. And I think for the most part, I did that. Um, Things just didn't work out. And at the end of the day, it's still a business. So um, that's really all it was for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then going up against Nova players in the NBA, what is that experience like? You know, somebody that you – probably like with like maybe stayed with on the road and stuff like that. You know, like, what is that whole experience? Like, do you usually like go out, get food with them? I mean, this year with COVID, but uh, just in general. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's just really cool to be able to see um, everybody being successful at this level, like going to Milwaukee and seeing Dante starting, putting up great numbers. When you go to Phoenix, you see Mikhail doing his thing, <laughs> Dallas, JB and, and just like whenever you play Toronto, you see Kalo. Mm-hmm. Like it's like yeah, it's um, it's real cool. Josh obviously, um, and it's just it's a dope experience to see people that you know being successful um, at what they do, and um, it's really dope. Mm-hmm. And what have you learned going back and forth between the G League and the NBA? Um, I would say I probably the biggest thing that I've learned is just like trying to at all times um just be aware um and just know what's going on around you and be aware of what uh might be needed because on your on your nba team they might need you to do a certain thing but your g league team might need you to do something different and if you go back up to the other team you got to remember that ain't what they need you to do up there you know what i'm saying so as whereas um I didn't always know how to switch the shift. Like I didn't know how to turn that on and off. Um, I would come down to the G League and be a leader and be vocal and be saying certain things, and then you get up and it's like that's not really your role here. Yeah, that's not dope. that ain't your lines. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So um, just figuring out that balance and figuring out how to best fit yourself into multiple situations. Um, I would say is the biggest thing that I've learned. Yeah, I I talked to Darren Hilliard and I was we I brought up um I was like Alex Caruso on a podcast. He was saying like you know some guys go out there in the G League and they try to score twenty points a game, but NBA teams have players that they're paying thirty million dollars to do that. Like you just kind of have to find your role, and it obviously Facts. switches when when you go up and down between the NBA and G League. So yeah, but oh, it's like. I like obviously I still when I come down to the G League or if I'm in the G League like I still want to have my best game you know what I'm saying and if I'm if I feel like if I need myself the best player on the team I still want to be aggressive and um give my team the best chance to win but at the same time I have to know and I still have to play the game correctly I think some guys come down to the G League and it turns into I'm just going I'm just scoring. I don't, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I'm being aggressive. I'm not caring about what's best for the team. Like, if you play the game the right way and you're still aggressive, I think as a good player, you can still end up with good numbers. It's just how you get those numbers. Some guy, like, if I get to 27, but I moved the ball, shared it, played great defense, I rebounded well, made the right pass, I have 27. And that looks a lot better than the guy who had 35, but it looked like he don't know how to play out there. You know what I mean, yeah, that was a very villain of a basketball response. Yeah, you just got to play, <laughs> play the game the right way, move the ball, you know. And like, if you, like, yeah, like like you said, like you could have 15 points and you know move the ball, like you have five assists, play a re- very well rounded game, and somebody has 25 points on 25 shots or whatever. Like, doesn't doesn't necessarily matter. Don't do nothing for you. Yeah, exactly. Like it doesn't matter that you had 25 points. Like you weren't you weren't yeah. out there. You're playing hero ball. Yeah. So what do you um, know now that playing in the G League and, like, going back and forth that um, you need to work on that's going to give you, like, the best chance to get back into the NBA? 
Um, just like I said, just being aware, um, being aware of what's going on around me, being aware of the situation you're in. Um, a lot of people, a lot of, like, and I fell victim to this for sure, aren't aware of where exactly you fall. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or aware of where exactly you, where you fit in here or your niche. And I think the word niche is, to be honest, probably one of the most important words to anybody that's not a lottery pick. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And finding your niche and finding what, what is going to give you staying power somewhere, um, I think is one of the most important things um, in this league and in this business because you see guys like, man, he's way more talented than him or he's he he's way better than him. And it's like certain guys were smart enough to realize I have to find what's going to make me stick out and what's going to make me stay here as opposed to what numbers look the best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I totally got you. Um, I think for me, that's probably, you know what I'm saying, I would say most important. Yeah. All right, man, that, that's all I've got for you. I really appreciate you taking the time. It.